So that's interesting. So you've just described it. I want to discover if aliens are, exist, and you mentioned before about creating life, and that's your goal. Let's explore that a little bit, because um, one of the challenges with saying I want to create life is the the problem of definition, right? You, as, If you want to say I want to create life, then you have to define what life is. But as soon as you start defining it, then you start already building the thing that you're trying to define when you have something as complex as life. So how do you think about what is living and what is it that you're, when will you know it is that you've been successful? <laughs> yeah, that's really the important question about def definition is a real problem. And so I will take a step back. In fact, I'm not going to define it and say, so well, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, how do you define, let's take a second. Let's define flight. Let's be before the Wright brothers or before the Mongolfia uh, were they brothers as well? There's all these brothers flying, right? All the so there's so so before people been up in balloons or airplanes, we saw birds and insects and maybe flying squirrels or gliding squirrels. So we had a concept that if you put some energy in, you could put, you could float. So that looked kind of okay. Birds are kind of weird looking. There, you know. So human beings are often fantasized about it, and then when people realize, okay, you can go lighter than there, you can fly. So okay, that so is in a balloon flying like a bird. Well, it's the definition there is you'll be in gravity and you're able to go up and you have a little bit of control. Now, when the, when the Wright brothers or whoever flew, they were like, they just went a few yards, powered flight, and then fast forward, you know, a hundred or so years. For me, a flight, I define flight as, you know, a powered machine where I can get on there are wings, there's a control system, and I can fly, you know, 30,000 feet above and land safely, right? So it's kind of new, uh, loose definition of flight, but for me, um, the, it, I can kind of encapsulate it with some features. Now let's take a step back and say, well, what does, how on earth do we define life? You fall into the same problem as flight. You know, if there's wings, it's not, if there's no wings, it can't fly. Well, Elon Musk manages to fly. <laughs> Right, there's no wings there. They're little bitty things. So what do you? So you then you get stuck. So, what what does flying? Let's not define. Let's not define flight or aeroplanes. What does flight do? Ah, oh, it gets you in the air and you stay there for a bit and hopefully you come down in a nice controlled way. So what does life do? So can we define what life does and not get into all this shenanigans of you know if you that cells doing this. And so I will put it really simply, and I think I have an answer that is not the answer, but yeah, the answer. So life is able to create objects, artifacts, songs, offensive content, whatever you want, um, that can't form randomly in an environment. So that, so what that does is when you see evidence in abundance, so that's it, life can do complex things in abundance. So that means not one off, right? So if I go, so life can make an iPhone. Here's my iPhone, latest one. Okay, some smart ass physicist would say, oh yeah, that could randomly form. Well, no, it can't. I mean, the, the chances this randomly form is precisely zero, not very small, just zero. But let's say I go to Mars and I find an iPhone. My grumpy physicist friend say, oh, you just found one. That could be a random event, even though I'm turning it on and I'm calling my mom or something. Um, if I found a thousand identical iPhones with a similarity, I know that they have been made by a life form, okay? And the same goes for a protein or a, a complex enough piece of DNA. So life does complex things the background non-life cannot do. And that is my working, not definition, but thing that life does. And what I want to do is make something that can do complex stuff um, from scratch, and that's really the acid test, as it were. So because this is the best thing that I can think of to open up your argument a little bit, how would you define that as different than, say, like a cloud that, uh, you know, the, the water forming together creates enough friction to make lightning and thunder and these so other things? Clouds, there's a phenomenon of clouds. I can answer this. But they're not, they're not, the, the, the clouds don't exist. So when I'm talking about object, iPhone, identical I'm not, if you find one, you, if you find me 10 identical clouds, identical down to the, you know, the pattern in the sky and show me them, then I'll, yeah, okay, they're alive, but you won't, right? They are complex um, assemblies, but they are not living because there is no information that caused them. Same of hurricanes on Jupiter or on earth or a flame, 
There's lots of flames, but they don't have enough features. So, you know, if you see a cloud in the sky that looks like a Monet painting, um, I can show you lots of Monet paintings. You'll only find a one-off and it's association. So, the, so when you see, so the thing is, although the phone is not alive, the phone is not alive, the, ca the causal structure or the sequence of events that produced the phone was alive. A protein is not alive, but the sequence of events that gave the protein is alive. COVID-19, when it's not in your cell, a virus is not alive, but it is produced by evolution. And when it goes into a cell, it is alive. And so what we start to do is this definition says, ah, oh, viruses alive or dead? Wrong question. Were viruses produced by evolution? Yes. Was an iPhone produced by evolution? Sure, because Steve Jobs, annoying as he is to some, hero to others, he was evolved. Same Elon Musk, unless Elon Musk is an alien. We, we could talk about that as well. So, so what I'm saying is that really complex objects that can form in abundance, i.e. identical copies, are the only way to do it is through evolution. And the only thing that we know that can do evolution in a, an autonomous way is life. Wow. You landed the plane on that one. I, I find that to be a very a fascinating concept. And I understand deeply when I heard you talking about it on a movie that you were in or documentary, the challenge of the definition, because life is one of those things that uh, um, philosophers can sit and, and talk abstractly about. And, and if they try and hang in the ordinary way that you define a term with a genus and a species, then, then by virtue of doing that, it puts you down a trajectory where you say the only way to succeed is to already know the answer before we've even started. Yeah. And I had an argument with Stephen Wolfram about this. He's a mathematician who's very smart, but the problem is he knows he's smart. I mean, I'm not smart, but I know I'm not smart. So this is my, this is my superpower. And, and so he would say, oh, no, I know what life is. So I don't know that you will ever define life because aliens will always look too complicated. I'm like, no, no, no. We will be able to tell aliens and living things in the universe by using this argument and uniquely this argument. And it's because Wolfram and most physicists don't really understand information. It's a really, I'm really saying outrageous things today. Yeah, that is actually heretical. I read a new kind of science. This is this is something that I would imagine he would come through the computer and attack you if you said that they don't understand information. They understand how to manipulate information very well in the human context, but they don't understand how information is invented by the universe. Um, I I think I have a notion of how to do it. And yeah, I think that the physicists are kind of in their own little bubble in the same way the organic chemists think that they have control over how to make molecules. The physicists and the computer scientists think they understand information. No, they don't. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures. <laughs>